McAllen's a distillery that we've talked about countless times before on our channel, yet we've never really gone into detail about the history of the distillery and how it came to be the brand that we know today. In this video, we're gonna do just that and take you through the distillery's history from its conception in 1824 until today. The McAllen Distillery is located in the heart of Scotland on the banks of the River Spey. It was legally established in 1824 by local farmer and teacher Alexander Reid after being persuaded to obtain a new licence made available by the 1823 Excise Act. McAllen therefore became one of the first legally licensed distilleries in Scotland, although at the time it was licensed as the Elkies Distillery, which is a turn from the illicit distillery or illicit still that had previously existed on the site during the 18th century. It was one of the original farm distilleries of Scotland with just two small stills inside a small shed. Alexander Reid ran the distillery for 23 years until his death in 1847 when James Shearer Priest and James Davidson took over. The distillery then ran without change and with very little documentation until 1868 when James Stewart took over, originally as tenant operator and then after acquiring the lease as owner. James Stewart rebuilt the distillery and oversaw its running until 1892. And as we've previously mentioned on this channel, Alfred Barnard's book, The Whiskey Distilleries of the United Kingdom, is one of the most comprehensive accounts of distilleries written in the 19th century. His comments are rather generic, describing the distillery as an old fashioned establishment situated in the hilly district above the Spey, and its internal arrangements are similar to the other Speyside distilleries. The whisky is Highland malt, and the product, like that of Glen Spey, mostly finds its way to the English market. 1892 was the first major jump up for the Elkies distillery. James Stewart sold the distillery to Roderick Kemp, a businessman and wine merchant known for previously owning and expanding Talisker, and Kemp had a focus on excellence and took the Elkies distillery further than any of its predecessors. He modernised the site and increased malt production to keep it up to date. It's also under Roderick Kemp's ownership that the distillery was renamed McAllen Glenlivet. Now, the Glenlivet suffix is an interesting one. Pre-1823, during the illicit whisky distilling period, Glenlivet had become a generic shorthand term for all whisky coming from Speyside. Despite the Glenlivet distillery becoming licensed in 1823, newly licensed distilleries were still using the Glenlivet suffix on their bottles, essentially piggybacking on the good name and reputation of the Glenlivet distillery. An error in the trademark application in 1875 meant that many distilleries were widely using the Glenlivet, the Glenlivet suffix and after legal proceedings in 1884 they allowed 10 distilleries, McCallum being one of them, to continue to use this suffix and use it they did until the 1980s when they started to label their whisky simply McCallum. Leaving the 19th century, the 20th century begins with a near continuous expansion for Macallan. After Roderick Kemp's death in 1909, the Roderick Kemp Trust was established to ensure the family's future ownership of the distillery. It was under this trust that the expansion was able to take place from the 1950s. In 1954, the capacity increased from two stills to five, now having two wash stills and three spirit stills. The next jump was in 1965 when a new still house was built, adding another seven stills. By 1974, McAllen had 18, and by 1975, the total number of stills was 21. This rapid expansion was an incredibly prompt and reactive response to the increasing demand for McAllen whiskey, although at the time it was sought after for blends, including being used in the famous Grouse blend. In marketing materials, McAllen described their foundations as being built upon six pillars. One of these is their curiously small stills. Although the number of stills was rapidly increasing during the latter half of the 20th century, the size was not. Each still is less than 4 metres high and has a capacity of 3,900 litres, which McAllen says is among the smallest in Speyside. This gives the spirit maximum contact with the copper, helping to concentrate the new make spirit and provide the rich, fruity, full-bodied flavours which are characteristic of the McAllen. Although this seems to be a conscious choice today, it's likely that the stills were originally this small due to the physical restrictions within the barns of the original farm distillery. As we've talked about before on this channel, blended whisky experienced a boom during the middle of the 20th century, and in 1966, the Roderick Kemp Trust was able to reform as a private limited company, and in 1968, float on the London Stock Exchange. 
1980 starts a new phase for the McAllen distillery. The whiskey lock in the 1980s was perhaps a catalyst that led McAllen to make the decision to focus on the newly emerging single malt market. It was at this time that the first McAllen advert appeared in the Times newspaper, and this advert was the inspiration for the Folio One Bottle from the Archival series, which was released in 2015. After making the decision to focus on the single malt market, McAllen mothballed their second still house and used existing stocks to release the first official single malt bottling. This re release was created under the management of Alan Shiak, I've probably got that name completely wrong, sorry, a relation of Roderick Kemp, and was marketed as a first growth whiskey, taking a classification used for the best Bordeaux wines, and it's an interesting insight to how McAllen were perceiving their product even at this early stage. It's also at this time, in 1980, that the iconic 1938 and 1950 vintages of the McAllen handwritten label series were first bottled. In 1986, Japanese distilling group Suntory, who owns the likes of Lafroig and Yamazaki, acquired a 25% stake in McAllen. In 1996, the remaining 75% was bought by Highland Distillers, ending the 104-year reign of the Roderick Kemp Trust. Having been under new management for two years, 1998 saw the restoration of the McAllen farm that adjoins the distillery, with the aim of resuming barley production, and McAllen began growing Golden Promise barley. Until 1994, Golden Promise had been the only barley used in the production of Macallan as it gives a strong, definitive flavour. However, reduced yields of barley forced Macallan to combine barley varieties. Right before we ushered in a new millennium, Edrington ushered in the purchase of Macallan. In 1999, the 1887 company, which was a partnership between Edrington and William Grant and Sons, bought Highland Distillers for a staggering £601 million. Edrington became the major stakeholder in McAllen alongside Suntory and William Grant and Sons as minority shareholders. As the 21st century began, Edrington had some big plans for McAllen. The first big decision made by Edrington was in 2001 when they opened a visitor centre and began to position McAllen at the forefront of the luxury collectible whisky market that was beginning to emerge. It was around this time that Edrington also led McAllen to become the first distillery to create bespoke casks for its maturation programme. This meant selecting specific trees to create casks coupled to McAllen's exact specifications by Tavassa in Jerez, Spain. During this process, the length and nature of the drying, the type of coopering, the liquid used for seasoning and the duration of the seasoning process will all be carefully considered by Tavassa according to McAllen's specifications. From 2004, McAllen increased their range to encompass a wider range of profiles, such as lighter and sweeter whiskies. This is best demonstrated by the Fine Oak series, which introduced a variety of American oak and ex-bourbon casks into the maturation process. Until this point, McAllen had solely matured their whiskies in ex-sherry casks. In 2009, the previously mothballed second still house was reopened and resumed production to meet increasing demand. This measure was clearly not enough, and in 2013, Edrington announced that a new £100 million distillery and visitor centre would be built. The site includes three still houses and a mash house, as well as a visitor experience. And the whole complex has been dug into the naturally sloping landscape, and the roof is made up of a jigsaw of 2,500 triangular tiles. Many of the 1800 beams that are used in the construction are visible from the interior, which leads to dramatic views across the stills. The new distillery opened in 2018 and had a huge impact on the secondary market prices for McAllen. For example, the Folio 1 from the Archival series began 2018 at an average of £750 and ended the year at £2000 on average, which was a 266% increase. 2019 saw quite a few developments for McAllen. The original distillery on the, on the Elkies estate was mothballed and will be decommissioned for the foreseeable future. However, the new capabilities of the distillery enabled the launch of a new core range expression, the McAllen Estate, which was made with barley grown at McAllen. 2019 also saw the year that McAllen would set its world record price. The 1926 60 year old fine and rare bottle sold at auction for a staggering 1.45 million, setting the record for the most expensive bottle of whiskey ever sold at auction to date. 
And it's worth noting that until 2018, no bottle whatsoever had passed the 100,000 pound milestone. Yet in 2018, this broke record was broken four times alone, which highlights how much the market accelerated in 2018. Of course, we're all well aware by now of the troubles of 2020 and the COVID-19 pandemic. McCallan closed its doors to visitors on the 16th of March 2020, however it continued to operate as a distillery with staff on site. While this caused a small amount of controversy at the time, it would ensure that 20, 30, 40 years time, McCallan won't have gaps in their expressions that some of the smaller distilleries will have when they closed. In recent months, McCallan have been able to reopen their visitor centre and have now resumed tours and visitor experiences. Sustainability is now at the forefront of many distilleries' minds, with McCallum being no exception. They've pledged to become carbon neutral by 2030, which will not only save operational costs, but will also save the planet. So there we have it. It's the history of the McAllen Distillery from its legal formation in 1824 until the present day. If you're interested in collecting and investing in whiskey, make sure you subscribe to this channel and we've got lots more of distillery histories to come.